What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode. Man, can you believe this shit? I just recorded the entire episode. And then uh, found out my audio was pretty shit. And by pretty shit, I mean fucking unbearable. The uh, settings of, um, of my mic uh, changed. I have no idea why. So I listened to it and I was like, nah, I can't sell you guys this stuff. So uh, I'm redoing it. I'm just redoing the whole thing. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's, um, that's all good. So yeah, welcome back. Welcome back to the uh, same five people. Uh, we got the same five people checking back in every week. And yes, I did make the same joke um, an hour ago. Uh, it just sounds a lot less good the second time around. Anyway, know that I appreciate you. Um, and I know for a fact that this small exclusive club we have going on right now is gonna, it's gonna expand. It's gonna expand. And we're going to end up with a lot more people here. You know, before I got into, uh, into trading, I was into, uh, I wasn't into, that was my actual job, my actual occupation. I was a, uh, a personal trainer. Um, I've been a personal trainer. I was a personal trainer for about 13 years. Did pretty good. Did pretty good. Did the whole social media thing, did the whole blogging thing, and it worked out really good. Uh, the reason why I'm boring you with this nonsensical storytelling is because there is a lot of similarities between uh, the trading industry and the fitness industry when it comes to social media and competing for attention. Most people aren't in shape because getting in shape is really difficult. Uh, but people want to be told that. People want to be told, you want to be told, look, you're not eating too much. You're not a pig. You, uh, you know, you just, uh, you're just genetically predisposed to the wrong type of genes, which makes you prone to store more body fat. You know, you can't do anything about it. Oh, you don't sleep nine and a half hours a day. Yeah, well, that's too bad for you. Then you're never going to be in shape. Uh, oh, you don't have money for this supplement. Ah, tough luck, buddy. You're never going to get in shape. People always want the easy way out. Whether it's with fitness, whether it's with Trading, anything that is worth doing is usually also very hard, whether it be a relationship, a romantic relationship with your partner, friendship, uh, certain jobs. People just tend to settle for um, mediocrity because it, it's, it's, just, it's just less uncomfortable. Uh, with fitness as well, you don't want to be told, look, you know, you're probably better off doing a, a full body exercise routine three to four times a week. Nah, that's way too uncomfortable. You'd rather do 25 exercises for your chest every single Monday and then do uh, back on, on, uh, on Tuesday. And then maybe if you get to it, do legs on Friday, but not before you do shoulders and abs on Thursday. I mean, I get it. You know, I've, I've been in this business. I wasn't in, in, in the business for a long time. Um, but again, the reason I'm getting into this is, is the reason why those kind of videos work really well. You know, the big dude with the nice abs and the big pecs, uh, telling you do these three exercises every week and you're going to get a big chest. That is sexy. I mean, that, that shit just sells in, 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 in the fitness industry. And the only reason why the boring stuff started selling well is because the, um, uh, the um, I'm a little burned out after after the uh, last hour. The evidence based um, the evidence based um, thinking, the evidence based trainers started getting um, started gaining a lot of ground. And even though people were were really skeptical at the beginning, like you know, why would I listen to this nerd talking about pro protein synthesis and and what have you? Um, when more and more shredded guys also got into the science of training, the science of nutrition, instead of just telling you, did, didn't you know the back, that breakfast is the most important meal of the day? 
uh, they didn't, you know, you have to eat six times a day. You got to eat small meals every day. You know, you're not uh, all that retarded shit. You know, it, it got more interesting for way more people when that happened, when that shift occurred in the um, health and nutrition landscape. And with trading, it's kind of the same. Most people on YouTube who are trade trading, they got the big flashy thumbnails, you know, buy this altcoin, this will do a thousand X, this will make you the most money this week, buy this stock, uh, get rich quick. It just, it just sells, it just sells. And, and those are the people I'm competing with the most. I'm not saying by any stretch of the imagination, all uh, YouTube trading content uh, is is uh, the way I just like the way I just described. It isn't, but um, most of them are, and it's a small amount of actual professionals, you know, doing the 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 hard work and the boring work to most people. Uh, it's it's just really not that sexy going over charts and 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 talking to you about shooting stars and and the last high pre break. Um, but it's important. It's really important. Um, however, I am going to change things up a little bit, meaning that the first episode I told you guys, look, I'm going to split the the episodes up. I'm going to do a Q and A. Uh, going to do a charts of interest. And the last four episodes, I've just been all over the place, kind of. Um, but um, I do feel like I have let you down a little, a little bit with the last four episodes. They were pretty good. I mean, again, this is the first time I'm I'm doing this. Um, but I do feel like I uh, assume too much knowledge of too many people. Meaning, uh, a few people have messaged me saying, "Look, I like listening to you. It's it's kind of fun, but I don't know what the fuck you're talking about." Um, so even when I'm trying to explain concepts to uh, you, the viewer, I'm assuming you know certain things, and maybe most of you do, but uh, uh, some and and a significant amount actually don't. So I'm going to introduce this new segment called Market Mastery. It's kind of cliche, but it's kind of catchy as well. Uh, and I just want to I want to go over a, a very simple lesson, a very simple principle every week <coughs> to kind of teach you the basics of trading. This is a huge disclaimer. This is not advice. This is especially not by financial advice. This isn't going to teach you how to trade, but this is only going to give you a more of a grasp of what I'm talking about. Um, so you know. That is going to be the first thing. And then the second thing is going to be uh, Trader Talk. And Trader Talk is just going to be the Q&A. However, the last four, uh, a few episodes, I, you know, I, I started answering questions in between charts or when going over charts, which is also good. But I want to um, uh, introduce the question I'm going to answer with a, a specific segment, which has a specific title, uh, just so it, it, it's just more clear that way. Um, with all that said, let's jump, jump right into the, uh, the first, um, market mastery. Right. So as you can see, we are now in full screen mode. Is there a reason for me to be in full screen right now? Absolutely not. There is none. However, I just wanted to show you that I could, and that I will, uh, reason for that is, oh, sometimes I'm talking to you. And I'm uh, showing you a chart and I'm not doing anything with the chart. So it's just a static screen while I'm in the corner somewhere down there. And you're using fucking binoculars to see my mouth move a little bit. Kind of boring, right? It's kind of, uh, it's, not, it's not up close. It's not personal. It's not dynamic enough. So I just figured I could now switch in between scenes like so. Switch between views. Now I know I can guarantee you with absolute certainty that there's going to be a time where I think I'm showing you a chart, uh, but I'm actually in full screen like this, and I'm just, uh, I'm going to be the idiot that just keeps talking about a chart, and you can't see the chart. And then I'm going to find out afterwards, and I'm going to have to redo the whole thing. That is a worry for later. Uh, for now, just know that I'm going to be doing this. Uh, I think it's pretty good. I think it's a good idea. Um, so yeah, let's just uh, jump right into the first uh, Market Mastery lesson. First 
lesson, first market mastery piece is going to be about the SR flip. Really, really, really simple, really basic stuff. I know I've uh, mentioned the SR flip support resistance flip uh, many times. Uh, it is actually called the principle of polarity. You won't hear um, people mention the uh, that term specifically a lot, but that is the actual uh, terminology. Uh, but on Twitter, you know, Twitter is life. Twitter is much more important. So just, you know, just say SR flip. If you're going to say principle of polarity, people are going to think, think you're a fucking nerd, uh, which isn't, uh, which isn't a bad thing per se. Uh, and it actually sounds pretty smart. Uh, anyway, so, um, yeah, again, whenever I say support or resistance, it is always potential support and potential resistance until it is proven to actually be support or resistance. However, once it is proven to be support or resistance, it is absolutely no guarantee it will be support or resistance again. Um, so people will go, you know, people who are skeptic of, skeptical of uh, technical uh, analysis, they go, well, if you're never sure, then why use it at all? Again, it is all about statistical probabilities and gaining an edge over something that is better than like a 50 or 40 or even lower percent uh, probabilities. I don't like the argument that if you if 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 your odds are 50 50 then you could just go to the casino i don't agree with that at all the uh, reason for that is quite simple uh if you have a strategy if you have a trading plan you know that you could be right half of the time however the times you are right you stand to gain much more than what you stand to lose the times you are wrong so on a long enough time frame you actually make money if the trades you win are bigger, uh, are bigger wins than your losses are. Uh, pre pretty straightforward, but, but skeptics will just always be, you know, skeptics. Anyway, uh, so yeah, the SR flip, um, if this is a chart and this is a, uh, this is 50, $50 dollars, um, price trades into this level. Let me change color just to spice it up a little. Fucking hell. Oh my God. I'm gonna, okay. Anyway, um, so let's say price trades into this level. So there's nothing, there's nothing here yet. Price trades into 50 for the first time, sells off significantly. That tells you something. That tells you something about what traders think at the $50 price level. It doesn't really matter why they sell. It could mean that people bought at $25 and think, well, you know, I just doubled my money I'm selling. Um, if you're in stocks, people tend to um, calculate the fair price per share based on certain metrics, which are not important right now. But they'll go, you know, if, if it goes above $50, I think this stock, this share is overpriced. Uh, so 50 is my take profit target. Uh, they sell, uh, people get euphoric at certain price levels, people sell at uh, psychological levels like ten dollars, a hundred dollars. People sell at certain market caps. They could there could be a thousand reasons. There is there is almost an, almost an infinite amount of reasons for why a vast amount of market participants do anything. Um, and 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 that is why technical analysis is so is is nice because all the reasoning doesn't really matter because you just have charts and and charts tell you at least something. Not everything, but something. Anyway, so price trades into the $50 level, sells off, trades back to 25 or wherever, 40. Uh, make of this what you will. Trades back into $50. Not everyone will consider 50 to be resistance um, just because it sold off once. It'll, it'll depend on how big the swing up and the swing downs are, um, meaning how significant of a, of a swing high this will become. Um, but in general, most traders will consider something to be resistance or support if price interacted with it at least twice uh, and then had a significant move away from that level. Uh, but in this case, uh, price moves uh, back down, comes back up into 50, sells off again. At this point, most market participants will consider 50 to be a significant uh, resistance level price comes back up sells again this simply means that within this specific market there is 
there are enough sellers wanting to step in and sell at $50. It is, I said this last time as well, I think, it is only after the amount of buying exceeds the amount of selling at a certain price that prices will continue to go up. Um, so at this point, we break through the $50 level. Now, why will this become support? Again, several reasons, but the most basic uh, explanation or the easiest explanation is let's say you are in this market and you're not the kind of guy or girl that just uh, download the, the, uh, a, a, a broker app or an exchange app uh, bought um, at, 50, uh, at $25 uh, three years ago, then open the app and see you're now in profit, then sell and step away from the, from the market forever. Most market participants are exactly what the term says they are. They're, they're per participating in this market. Um, that, that is the human element. Then there is also the, the, uh, uh, automated element. There's the bots, there's the algos, uh, algos make up a ton of daily trading volume across pretty much all markets. As far as I know, as far as I'm aware of, um, so, so people know what price, uh, action kind of looked like, even if you don't trade technical, technical analysis. You have a you have a concept, you have an idea of what price has done um, at, at at certain levels. You know, kind of, if you trade Bitcoin, what the all time high is of of a uh, Bitcoin. You know, kind of, where a major support, major resistance is. You kind of know. Um, so so once once a certain level breaks, you know what previous significant levels used to be. And that is exactly what happens uh, at, a, at a moment like this. So price breaks through 50, but people don't forget the 50 level. So it trades up to, let's say, 75, and then comes back down to 50. Within a lot of people's minds, the 50 level is still relevant, still significant, but it flipped. It, it, it's a psychological flip that occurs, um, which turns it into, into support, which is basically a, a self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh, but that doesn't matter. It, you can say, "Well, I don't, I don't like that explanation." It, it, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. What matters is that it is an actual phenomenon within financial markets. This doesn't happen. This doesn't occur all the time. It, it doesn't, it doesn't mean this happens ninety percent of the time, but it happens a significant amount of time. Um, and and some people base their entire trading strategy on uh, trading support resistance flips. Especially if you trade these on a weekly time frame, uh, they can be quite quite good to trade. Um, so yeah, that is that is the basic uh, that is the basic. Um, no, actually, you know what? You could also, if you're if you're a visual thinker, if you want to have visuals in put it planted inside your brain, just think of it as a uh, as a as a as a ball. Let's say this is support price comes into support. Uh, price or the ball bounces back up, comes back down, bounces back up again, comes back down, bounces back up again, and then bounces through the concrete floor. When it comes back up, the floor is still kind of going to be there, and it's going to uh, react to that level. That is, that is a very, very basic and simple explanation, but it is how markets and how price tends to move quite a lot of time. So uh, yeah, don't forget that is the basic SR flip, basic support resistance flip, uh, which is also called the uh, principle of polarity. All right, before we dive into the charts, I wanna give a quick shout out to our sponsor, Exception. If you trade on chain, you need to try Exception. I mean, we've all been there, trading on MetaMask, Phantom, Dex Tools, or really any other Dex wallet, only to have swaps fail or get hit with ridiculous fees. And how great would it be to just set limit orders for any token so you can buy the dips or take profits without constantly having to check the market? Imagine going to bed knowing you won't wake up to another coin that dropped 99% because you could not set a stop loss or missing out on huge profits because you didn't have a take profit order set. And that's where Exception steps in. Now look, I've tried plenty of Telegram trading bots, and let me just tell you, 
exception stands out. I wouldn't partner with them if I did not believe they were the best in the game. Plus, they share the revenue they earn through fees with holders of their token and traders using their bot. This bot streamlines on-chain trading and makes it so much more efficient, which is exactly what you need in fast-moving markets like these. Check them out using the link in the description below. All right, so first chart of the day is Bitcoin. Look, I'm not the type of person to tell you uh, I told you so. I'm not going to gloat. I'm not going to be the one to say, you know, all these people were really, really bullish, uh, bullish at the top, bearish at the bottom. You know, these levels are supposed to make you bullish. That is what they're supposed to do. Uh, but I did warn you. I did warn you. Uh, but it sucks. It does suck to see price trade back down here. In reality, reality though, uh, we're down 6.5% from the top, which isn't huge, but it is significant. Uh, but the reason why I want to, you know, just push this point through is again this was and still is a diagonal level diagonal levels are less reliable than horizontal levels it is just that people are so fucking addicted to being in trades that they just cannot stand the fact that they're going to miss out on a you know the funny thing is and i've said this already but people trading this most of the people trading this are expecting new all time highs and I can guarantee you that 99% of people who are expecting all-time highs aren't expecting fucking 76,000. They're expecting 100, 120, 130. So it doesn't matter if you trade this at, if, you, if your entry is at, is at 70 or 74 or 76. I mean, it does if you buy like 2,700 Bitcoin. I know it, it does add to the bottom line, um, to the potential profit you stand to gain but you're buying yourself a lot of certainty and certainty is worth a lot in trading. Fucking, I'm out of breath. Anyway, um, wait for a confirmed breakout. Why will you not just wait for a confirmed breakout? To me, that level is still 74.3. Um, another thing is, I, I, I still think that if you're, if the base of your, the if the basis of your idea, um, of your hypothesis, of your theory was that we are in an uptrend, like so, where this is the swing low, this is the uh, higher high, you got this high here, and you got the higher high, you got the lower, uh, fucking hell, you got the higher low, got the higher high, the higher low, higher high. If that is the basis of your idea, uh, which isn't wrong, which is absolutely true, which is objectively true. I mean, we can actually look at the chart and 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 see it to be so. You don't want price to close through. You know what? I'm not a great painter. I'm not a great cartoonist. I'm not a great artist. I'm just going to use this tool instead of drawing on the screen like an idiot. You don't want to see price break. Uh, and close on the daily below this level because the basis of your of your of of your idea is out of the window. What does happen, and a lot of people do this, and and if you catch yourself doing this, this just slap yourself across the face. People will go like this. All right, so yeah, low, high, low, high, low, high, uh, bullish market structure, which is good. Uh, so I don't want to see that market structure break because if it does, I am wrong on the trade and I should just close the trade, take my loss and move on. What people will do is, is, is this and they'll, it, just, it just happens all the fucking time. This is the low. Price closes through the low. Um, and then they go, you know, yeah, I know that these were the, uh, the lows and market structure is now bearish again, kind of, but this is a pretty good level too long at. I mean, you know, you got this candle here. It's a thrust candle. It closes through the, the, the highs here, the structure. It's significant structure. Then you got the last high pre-breakout. 
Uh, so if you, you're gonna, you, you know, you're gonna see that if I close my trade here, it's gonna bounce at this level, and I'm gonna be a moron who sold the bottom. So, I, <coughs> so I'm not gonna sell. I'm just gonna wait and see what price does at this level. Uh, but then price trades down here, and people will go, well, you know, you got this significant swing low here, and yeah, I'm not gonna be the fucking jerk off who sells the double bottom here and see price bounce to 120,000 in a single candle. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hold out and uh, hold this trade because this is going to be the trade that changes everything, right? We're all looking for the next best trade to change your life overnight. But then you know what happens? Price trades down below, closes, we're going to be like, well, you know, you got the triple bottom. I mean, the triple bottom, right, guys? This is going to turn into a quadruple bottom and then bounce. So I'm just going to hold out and I'm not going to sell. Well, I know I'm boring you with this and you get the fucking point already, but I'm just going to take it all the way home. It's going to test the bottom of this. We'll go like, yeah, I'm not selling here because we're at the bottom of the range. I'm not going to sell the bottom, but your initial idea has been, uh, what's it called? Uh, well, you're wrong on your initial idea. You've been wrong on the initial idea for like a month now. Uh, don't do that. I mean, seriously, don't do that. You, if, you're, if you consider yourself to be a trader, you one, create a plan, and then B, or two, stick to that plan. If you have a plan, if you create a plan, and you find that you're not sticking to it, um, you have no confidence in yourself. You have no confidence in your ability as a trader. So then the next question is, why the fuck are you trading? Um, and that's a, little, that's a little unfair. I should have said, then why are you trading based on ideas that you make yourself? Um, if, if you can't do that, which you should be able to uh, in the long run, uh, then just listen to other people. But there's no reason to create or have plans and then just not stick to them. Uh, and then people say, well, you know, rules are meant to be broken. I mean, sure, there's good reasons to break rules, to break laws. There's always reasons. There's always nuance. But you're gonna, you're gonna fuck yourself up really, really bad in this business. The number one rule, the most important thing by a mile is protecting capital. You got, if you got to stick at this or you got to be able to stick at this long enough to enjoy the handful or two handfuls of trades that actually make the difference every year. The distribution of, 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 um, of your P&L um, isn't the same among, uh, of, uh, across all traders. It, it it, it, it's different for everybody, but most of the time, most traders make the most amount of money with a small amount of trades each year. It is therefore paramount that you survive in between those trades long enough so that you get to enjoy them. No one to step on the gas, no one to use the brake. Uh, those, those things are, are really, really, really important, especially with elections coming up again we've spoken about this at length there's just going to be volatility you're gonna you're gonna be stopped out of trades unnecessarily there is absolutely nothing wrong with not taking a trade right now just wait a few days you gotta wait two more days just wait two days nothing wrong with that no position is a position as well there is abs there's no freaking way bitcoin is going to hit all-time highs without you within the next 48 hours it's not happening so just chill out you know, just be as chill as I am right now, right? Anyway, um, yeah, that's Bitcoin. It still looks good. I mean, it, it still looks good. Um, if you do decide to end up uh, taking this trade, uh, because this is a still bullish market structure, you want to be long before the uh, market structure reverse reverses, uh, the bullish market structure breaks which is before the last higher low, which would be somewhere around this level here right now. Um, so your stop, I wouldn't put my stop below these uh, lows here because it's way too obvious. It could be a liquidity grab. 
<coughs> I probably put my stop down here. Um, if I were along this level here where we are right now. But um, I'm still waiting. I'm just waiting for a confirmed breakout above 74.3. Because look at look at the weekly chart, guys. Look at the weekly chart on this. It's it's ridiculous. It doesn't look good at all. Not only are we back inside of the range, the seven in month range. It is also a uh, shooting star. Shooting star being uh, this last weekly candle. A shooting star is a uh, a candle with a relatively small. Uh, candle body sorry and a longer wick meaning there's just you know price traded this was the 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 highest price that was jesus christ the highest traded price um but it, it rejected and it uh it's about to close in three hours probably around here i don't see us saving this weekly candle anymore especially not on a, a low volume sunday however I'm kind of confused with summer, winter, fucking autumn, spring times, but um, we trade five markets open at like 11 p.m. I think our time. Wait, I can just actually check instead of being an idiot. Um, so we could see some extra two hours and four minutes, right? So yeah, at 12. So we could see some increased volume before we uh, close this weekly candle. Maybe we'll save it, but I don't. Uh, I don't think so. I, I'm not holding my breath. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's Bitcoin for uh, for now. Uh, coffee still in this short. Uh, went over this last week as well. Uh, looks pretty good. We got the rising wedge. We got the confirmed breakout and the retest. So this is the confirmed breakout for me. Breakdown. And we got the retest and we got the filled, um, uh, the, not the filled, re it was a successful retest of this lower brown boundary, but it filled to get back into the range, into the wedge. Um, so, so far, this is looking pretty good. Again, as I've said before, even though th this is an actual pattern, not just a diagonal level, there's a, a clear and important distinction between that because patterns are more reliable than just diagonal levels, but there's still patterns that are compromised. Of, well, not compromised. They're made up of fucking diagonal levels. Um, so I'm watching all these, all these horizontal levels. They're all going to be important to watch. Every single one of these is going to be important to watch. But in general, you want to trade this, if possible, to the bottom of the chart pattern, which is uh, going to be down here. So we'll see uh, what this brings us next week. Uh, I didn't go over this trade in previous streams, even though it's a pretty good trade to cover. We got the Kiwi, we got the New Zealand dollar. Um, we have this huge, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring back the brush tool, baby, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suck at it, but you're going to have to uh, accept it. We got this huge swing low. This is a swing low because you have price going up, and you have price going down, and you have price trading back away from this low. Uh, again, I love obvious price points, obvious obvious levels. If you look at this chart, even if you, it just it just stands out. There's no way you don't see this level. I mean, sure, most levels most of the time are random. This is obviously not a random level. Um, so once price breaks through this low with this daily candle here, I want to be short this market, uh, and I want to do so at the last low pre breakdown, which is here on the daily. However, I want to fine tune, um, if possible on, you know, on the hourly, uh, which is here. This uh, low right here. Uh, you could have used this one as well. Uh, you could even push for this one here. But uh, actually, I'm wrong. I think I'm wrong. Yeah, there we go. <clears throat> I traded this on the four hour. Uh, so price looked like this. Uh, traded it, uh, shorted this market, and uh, targeted the uh, equal lows. So we uh, go all the way down. <clears throat> Close this for a nice uh, profit. 
but then price closes through here. Uh, this candle right here. Important one because it closes through closes through all these lows. Fuck, I know I finished my drink as well, and I really need a drink. Anyway, closes through here. I want to be short again on this level here. Last low pre-breakdown. Get filled. Uh, and I want to trade it all the way back down here. Here. But I get stopped out because I move my stop manually above this candle right here. Man, look at that crooked ass fucking arrow here. This one. Uh, so yeah, price moves back up. I'm stopped out, and obviously price trades to my target, which sucks. But anyway, this was a pretty good trade, and it does show you how I trade shorter term, uh, uh, shorter term trades. Yeah. On to the next one, Solana. Uh, last week I told you, look, this is the idea. We got these highs. Fucking, I'm so bad at this fucking brush tool man it's ridiculous anyway we got this high we got this high and we got i'm gonna use it again fuck i gotta be, get better at it and we got this uh, these highs here price then closes through the highs and it then becomes important for me to have a look at this chart so i long but what you see here well actually it's uh, looking better than an hour ago <laughs> um when I last, uh, when I recorded this uh, an hour ago, price was trading down here. If price closes here, I think the daily candle is saved. Uh, but if it closes too low, you know, my idea is out the window and I'm just out of the trade. It's it's simple. It's as simple as that. I'm, I'm not going to do the same fucking game where I go, well, you know, it could be these lows. It could be a double bottom. I'm not going to. Well, maybe I should turn on a uh, a um, a lower time frame, a moving average, where you go. Oh, well, it's not this ab moving average that is now my new support. Stop. You know, you know what cha really changes your 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 trading uh, dramatically. Instead of always trying to think of reason reasons why you're right, why the trade is good, why you're on the wrong uh, right, you know, why you're on the right side of the move. Instead, once you enter a trade, always think, okay, why does this trade suck? Why am I an idiot? Uh, what am I missing? What is not good about this trade? And, and um, when you then really cannot think of a good reason, you're probably in a good trade. Um, if there's like seven reasons to think of why the trade is absolute shit, it probably is. Uh, but people are always trying to justify themselves being in a trade instead of uh, thinking of why their trade sucks. Um, if you combine that with the, with the conviction and, uh, and the um, um, trust in your own strategy, your own plans, you're going uh, to be able to, to, to stick to your plans a lot easier. Um, yeah, aside from that, markets have been pretty frothy, pretty boring. Uh, I am short the S&P. Uh, I was considering two markets to short, both the Dow Jones and the S&P. I just really like the structure on the S&P more, which probably means this trade is going to do fucking shit, and the Dow Jones is going to do um, what I wanted it to do, but I'm just going to miss it, uh, which is okay. You know, it doesn't matter. I'm, uh, I'm happy. I'm healthy. Uh, I got a full bush of hair. It doesn't matter. And it's just money, right? I mean, money doesn't make you happy. Right? Said no rich person ever. Anyway, um, yeah, I really like the look of this. I really like the look of it. Um, so, yeah, just apply my own, what I just, the advice I just gave you, you know, just, just do it now. Why does this trade suck? Well, you could think of this fundamentally look. Chances are pretty big Trump is going to win, uh, which is probably going to be good for the market. Probably. It's not a guarantee, but probably. So, you know, it's only two more days until the election. And when Trump is announced the winner, price is going to do this and you're going to be stopped out. It's absolutely true. Absolutely true. Just um, the thing is, I don't trade fundamentals. I trade naked price action. 
And right now, the only reason, the only reason why I think this trade won't work out, but I don't think the trade sucks, these highs here could be the support we are at right now. And price could do something like this that could happen. But the reason I still really like this trade is because at the bottom, we don't see any significant uh, hammers, uh, which means that uh, buyers aren't, re aren't really stepping in significantly. And we also got aggressive price action into my level, which I really, really prefer. Uh, if it were would have been a slow drift of death, uh, I would have uh, pulled the order. But this, uh, this, is, this is a, uh, a good trade. This is looking good. I would take this trade every single day of the week. This is also really important to note that, that and that is that is the fucked up thing with with trading. Um, and you could compare it to to sports. I mean, if you're a if you're an athlete and you can play a terrific game, right? It doesn't matter which which uh, which sport it is. You could play a terrific game. You could fight a a, a good match um, and still lose. And with trading, it's the exact same. We tend to judge or we tend to um to um fucking hell i am i am completely burned up uh we tend to analyze the way we're doing by outcome alone uh but you can you can actually take a lot of trades that end up being losers but they're but they're still good trades again if this trade ends up being a loser um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, regret it. I really like this. I really like this, this, uh, trade. Uh, you could also say, look, this could be the potential, uh, last low pre, uh, breakdown. And even this could be the last low pre breakdown, which is going to stop you out. Um, so that, that could be an argument for, uh, uh, uh incorrect stop placement, not, but not a bad trade per se. If you're a Fibonacci trader, which I am uh, not, you could go uh, look, you know, we have uh, Fibonacci levels. We're going to put them on the chart. Um, in this case, I have, I'm actually checking this for the first time right here live. Um, this is actually a good thing if you do, again, trade Fibonacci, because this is the first Fibonacci uh, level that is important and it, it rejects from it. Or you could say, look, well, the 0.618 level is much more important. Uh, and you're right above the 0.5 Fibonacci level with your stop. Uh, so that's that's shitty. So you, you probably have a, a bad stop placement and therefore wrong position sizing, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, it's, it's a good looking trade. It's a good looking trade. Uh, I think that is it for now uh, with regards to the charts. Holy shit, Amazon. Be uh, earnings were also last week. Uh, um, not much going on. Um, no huge misses or huge uh, beats. Maybe Intel. Intel did, did pretty good, I think. Intel was at like ten percent. Um, but yeah, th this is this is it for now um, with the charts. Uh, again. 48 hours guys just just wait it out you don't have to be uh, in a trade um so for now i want to move on to uh the first trader talk now the first trader talk is actually a very simple question but it's a personal one so it could be either uh fun to talk about if you give a shit about me uh, if you don't you know just just skip this whole part uh, but a few people ask me, how the hell did you get into trading? Especially people who knew me from uh, back in the day, back in the in the fitness days. Uh, they were like, how did you end up trading? Um, so for your information, I've been trading full-time since 2022. So for uh, two years now, uh, full-time. Um, however, I got involved in markets, in financial markets in 2017. And yes, it is a freaking cliche story it is not romantic it is not it's nothing there's nothing special about this story um i was actually so yeah i got pulled into financial markets through crypto so yes i'm a crypto bro you could you could say that uh, but i'm not i'm not i was i was but i'm not anymore and um i was actually i was actually involved with crypto before i got into trading 
I wasn't trading back then. It was just buying stuff and then hoping it would it would moon. Um, but um, I bought I bought Dogecoin in like 2013. I want to say or 2015. It wasn't even on exchanges back then. You just bought it on Reddit, and I bought for like four hundred dollars or five hundred dollars. So you just pay like a random dude on on Reddit through PayPal, and you just hope he sends you Dogecoin. Um, but a guy I knew recommended it to me, so I did do that. And then I think at the peak it was like one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, which is a pretty good rate of a uh, return. Uh, but I obviously lost lost uh, access to that wallet along the way. Uh, no problem, you know it doesn't matter. I mean, why would I want to put four hundred or five hundred dollars into something and then just cash out one hundred and fifty k, right? Anyway, um, so yeah, two thousand seventeen uh, seventeen rolls along, and I put like. 20, 25k into, uh, well, you're probably going to guess it, but of course, one, Bitcoin, B, Ethereum, and, uh, well, you're all going to guess the third coin. Come on, just, you know, yeah, it's it's the coin you're thinking about, uh, thinking about, it's uh, it's Ripple, it's XRP. I was uh, one of those guys, I was, uh, I was, um, you know, I, I signed up to the XRP army, I was like, yeah, this is going to take over the, uh, the financial world banks are going to be using xrp you know you get the ledger i was just using all the ripple buzzwords not knowing what the fuck they meant um uh, but i was like yeah this is this is going to change everything and by just um looking at the outcome measuring my competence measuring my intelligence uh, just by looking at outcome alone, I was a fucking genius. I mean, uh, that 20, 25K went to almost 300K in like two months. So who the hell are you to tell me anything about investing? I'm the new Warren Buffett. But uh, yeah, I bought pretty much the, the cycle top. I didn't know what a cycle was. I didn't know what a top was. I didn't know anything about anything. And I still don't, but I know a lot more than I used to. Which is, uh, which is kind of what you want to do in life. But uh, so, yeah, I saw 300K turn uh, into uh, 250. But in the meantime, you know, you got this, you got your phone, you got the telephone. And yes, I said telephone like a, like a fossil. Uh, you got your phone, you got Delta on there, you got your portfolio, and you're looking at it and you're thinking, yeah, I got this shit figured out. Not only that, I'm rich, I'm loaded. You know, I, I got this. So you start spending your actual money, your real money, um, thinking your unrealized profit is going to uh, remain unchanged and it's just going to keep going up. But uh, yeah, the, the, that 250 started turning into 200. And you're like, well, you know, that doesn't really matter. I mean, I'm still up by a lot. Like I 10x my money in like two months, bro. Who the, who the hell does that? Nobody does that. I do it. I'm I'm the only fucking guy doing this. But then two hundred thousand turns into one hundred fifty, and you're like, well, you know, all right. So my portfolio went down by fifty percent, which is probably a lot. I don't I don't know because I I don't have anything to compare it to. Plus, I don't really have anyone to talk to this uh, to talk about about this. That wasn't the right sentence, but anyway, you get you get the point. Uh, so 150 and you're like yeah okay well it's half but it's not going to go down much more right i mean if things go down 50 percent, shouldn't they go up i mean don't people want to buy it at these prices again it's just it's just mental retardation because there's no good reason to think this there's apps you have no you have no concept of anything um when it comes to trading you're just guessing you just Ah, I was such a fucking idiot. Anyway, so yeah, your 150 turns into 100, and you're like, okay, I'm never selling. There's no way. There's no way I'm taking this loss. But you're not taking a loss. You're just taking, um, you're just taking less uh, unrealized profit. But it's still everything is still unrealized, right? So 100 turns into 50, and then you're back into you're back into the 20, 30 range. 
uh, you're like, you know, yeah, this is where I started. So, you know, I'm back. Uh, I'm back here. I'm back once again. It was a good learning. Uh, it was a good lesson, a good experience. I've learned a lot from this. I learned nothing. I learned jack shit. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm, I'm starting up again. I'm starting over. But then 20 turns into 10. You're like, holy shit, I'm down 50%. God damn, I'm, I'm pretty bad at this. And then 10 turns into, uh, I think I, so I think I, the low point of my portfolio back then got down to 8,000 euros, something like that. And I was like, fuck me. But um, it did, uh, it did hook, it, it got me hooked. It got me hooked really bad. And it wasn't due to the profit potential. I mean, sure. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's all about the tech. It's not. It's, it, it is about profit. But um, I got hooked because of the complexity. Uh, so once I started really diving into everything that has to do with actual trading, the, the sheer complexity of it all, I mean, it was, it was really, it was mind-blowing. And even though I like working with other competent people, uh, I just I, I I just prefer working uh, for myself um, and not having to rely on others. I really like the idea of putting more hours into something and standing to gain a lot more from it. Uh, yeah, so so that really got me hooked. Um, started reading everything I could, started watching everything I could. So yeah, I'm not going to sit here and tell you I did everything right. You know, I, I, I lost all my money in 2017 and then did everything right. Immediately signed up to a course of Tom Dante, did his course. Now I'm a professional trader. I have like nine screens and I, I make a million dollars a month. I don't, uh, I'm not where I want to be yet, by, but I am miles ahead of where I was a few years ago. Uh, I just hope I can teach the people who are a step uh, or two behind me uh, a thing or two or three. Uh, that is just my intention. This is never going to be a, 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 moon, boy a moon Boy channel. I'm not gonna make videos uh, with thumbnails where I have my mouth wide open and say, oh my God, this is the next altcoin that is gonna do a thousand X. We're not gonna do that. We're going to remain professional. We're going to treat this as a profession, which it is. I mean, there's countries who have to report uh, uh, how many of their traders. No, there are countries uh, where brokers, brokers or exchanges operate and uh, where it is mandatory for them to report on the profitability of their traders. The issue I have with, with this uh, statistic is that they consider everybody with a with a uh, account with a broker account uh, a trader which they're not uh, and people use this statistic to say look this is how complex trading is uh, but you can't you know everybody who owns a football isn't necessarily a football player um, but it does give you a general idea of the complexity so uh, of 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 the of the of all the people with a uh, broker account in most Western European countries, less than 1% is profitable. Uh, and an even smaller amount can live off of trading. Uh, so that is basically all you need to know. I mean, again, you could you could argue, you know, you don't know how much uh, that 99% that actually do or does because they don't do much probably. Uh, and that is all true. But in general, it does give you an idea. I mean, I don't have to tell you how hard it is to become a professional basketball player or to fight in the UFC it, it, it just doesn't happen for most people ever uh, same goes for trading so the, there is no good reason not to treat this as a, a serious profession which is exactly what we're going to do which is exactly uh, what this channel is about you're not here for the nonsensical approach uh, approaches you're not here for the for the levels of bullish intensity that just exceeds everything that is rational. Uh, I am going to keep giving you nuance um, because you deserve so. you, you, just, you just deserve it. People deserve to, to know how, how hard this is and then still decide to do it and put in the hours and put in the work and then fucking succeed. That is the best thing in life. That is the best thing 
uh, anyone can do. Just grab, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna say, just grabbing the bull by the horns and fucking owning that thing. <clears throat> Christ almighty, I just did this for two hours. Anyway, uh, yeah, election uh, in like 48 hours. No position is a position as well. Don't feel the need to trade. Wait for levels to break through horizontal levels. Uh, but most importantly, and don't forget this, subscribe, comment, like. It really does help. It, it, the algorithms fuck you up so badly. It is ridiculous. If I look at my shorts, uh, so I publish shorts, um, which just you know feeds into the attention span of most people. I just upload like six. One of them has like 16 views. The other is like 540 views. The other is like 70 views. It's so random. Um, so anything you can do is, is much appreciated. I would really appreciate a comment or a, a question as well. Any kind of feedback, uh, just let me know. And uh, yeah, hoping to see you guys here next week. Uh, have a great evening and have a, a good trading week ahead. See you next time.